Welcome back to Night in the Woods, everyone. In the last episode, we went with a Angus to the, uh, dr the to the sheer cliff in the woods, and we both saw the ghost. Although it's probably not really a ghost; it's a dude. Although May thinks it's a ghost. <laughs> Hi, Sharkle. All right, refamiliarize myself with the burpins. Okay. This is a new recording session, but as usual, we checked out the episodes. Before we started this, so we remembered where we left off and didn't have to scramble for information immediately. Bedtime, yawn. My gamer's instinct is telling me that we're nearing the end of the story, but I think we've got a little ways to go first. Yep, we're going to hang out with Greg today. Are we? You have yes. decided this? I've decided this. Oh, nightmare time. Oh, yeah. I see little bits, like little stars. Or something. Can you move? I can. That's... what the heck? Ah! Oh, okay. Hi, May. I didn't even see her down there. She wasn't even blinking. Right. Wow, it's really dark. It is. Alright, let's go find those musicians, yeah? Yes. Wait. I didn't start at the lamps. Nope. There may not be any musicians to find. Or may, j may just be wandering in the darkness. Oh, shit. It's not good. It's just me and that like eclipsed moon. Steam green light logo. God, I'm scared. Not even safe here. Uh. Okay. What is that? What are you? Kitty? Hello? Can you talk? Yes. For some reason, you're the first thing here I've thought to talk to. Are you... God? No. Oh. So... Seconds ago, little creatures are coming. And they are asking if I am God. And I am asking what God is. And they are telling me. And I am not this God. And this God is nowhere. Well, that's where faith comes in, I guess. Little creatures are explaining faith, and moments ago is the beginning. I am here then, and here now, and there is nowhere for God to be hiding. So, what am I doing here? Monstrous existence. No, I mean, what am I doing here? What are you? What are those other giant animals? Have I been seeing ghosts? There were, like, bits of the world? I think I was on a train, but it was like a town? It's all... Ugh, I lost it. Okay, so... A great beast is walking through the sands. And they are climbing into the air. And now they are making a tear. And now they are gone. And now you are here. A tear? With their hoofs. They are making a tear. Little creatures are wandering through the air, and they are dragging in places and echoes of lives, and they are asking me about God. My head hurts. I am going to tell you something, little creature. You are swimming further and further out to sea, and beyond are things blind and terrible. And I am showing you now. Oh, God. Oh, God. They are blind, but they are seeing you. And you are coming to them. After this, you are not returning here. I am climbing into the air and closing the sky. Closing the sky? Yes. Okay. I will tell you a second thing. 
there is a hole at the center of everything, and it is always growing between the stars I am seeing it. It is coming, and you are not escaping, and the universe is forgetting you, and the universe is being forgotten, and there is nothing to remember it, not even the things beyond, and now there is only the hole. So does anything mean anything? This is not a question worth answering. What about my home? What about my friends? Soon they are dying. Soon they are rotting. You are atoms. And your atoms are not caring if you are existing. Your atoms are monstrous existence. Then why was I here, goddammit? Why was I chosen to see all of this? Where is this going? Little creature, you are not chosen. There is no one to choose you. This is going nowhere. We are not meeting again. And the universe is forgetting you. And I am remembering you. But not because I am caring. The beginning is moments ago. The end is moments away. There is no time to forget before all is forgotten. Goodbye, little creature. This really is Existential Crisis the game. That was strangely comforting to me. Yes. I don't know if we've ever talked about that on the show, but that is one of our very fundamental differences about, I guess, the afterlife. That you find a certain level of comfort in nothing being beyond life, and it freaks me out. Yeah, It like, gives me, like, serious fear. I find comfort in the lack of meaning. Because the lack of meaning means I am not wasting myself. By existing, I am doing what I was meant to do. Doing what I want is doing what I was meant to do. Your existence basically justifies itself. Yes, there's no meaning. I'm not made to do something great. I'm not responsible for anything but my own personal safety and security. Right. And I've got that down pat. There's nothing else to worry about. I can understand that. I just have the fundamental disagreement about it, but not even entirely. Yeah. Like, I'm not I... sure if there's a purpose for our existence either. I just, I, I guess I meet you halfway because I stopped short at the belief that there is nothing. Although, you've started to come around anyway. Like, yeah. you've slowly started becoming more agnostic lately. But yeah, just we like, could debate and discuss that all freaking day and we have a game to get to. Holy crap. Yep. Uh, lesson Feel free to discuss it in the comments if yeah. you dare. Final I lesson suppose. for the kids. You are not destined for greatness. You have the potential for greatness. You can reach out and grasp it if you choose. But you don't have to. Right. No pressure. I think that's what May is struggling with here. She isn't sh sure if... There is no purpose, or if there is one, she just doesn't know yet. Yep. Like, okay. it's it's her naivety or Naivete. ignorance that is what is causing her biggest problem. Yes. To economy today, turnip founder Mike Eggplant to buy postal service. Mike Eggplant. Well, Sharkle. Whee. Whee. Morning at the pickaxe if you're in town center today. I didn't even know I am saying this. You're in town center every day. Anyway, see you later. Hey, dude, at the old Snalkin. Snalkin. Come save me from boredom supreme. Sincerely, Gregory. <laughs> Just the coolest away message. Planets are to be pitied as they cannot know how big and cool they are. Dr. Kathleen Conklin, National Astronomy Agency. And Casey. <sighs> Hi, Casey. I hope you're happy and having fun wherever you are. Yes. He's a big question mark. 
He really is. Like, I wonder if that'll have something to do with the ending. God, I hope not. No? I hope Casey's far away from all of this. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Sort of like how you and I will probably never look back on Xenia whenever we move out of here. Nope. Not even a passing glance. Bird. Bird. I kind of get you now. All like trapped and shit. I should let you out. Nah. Dad will get mad. Anything in Grandpa's books today? Nope. Anything in the tooth locker? Tooth locker. It's like the Hurt Locker, only it's not a shitty movie. I don't Although, think I've ever seen it. I haven't either. It's not fair of me to call it <laughs> shitty if I haven't even seen it. Nope, nothing in the Tooth Locker. Nothing in the Tooth Locker. Although technically it is a tooth lo or a Hurt Locker since, you know, teeth hurt coming out. Uh, not, not if you're all shot up with Novocaine. I mean, the pain is still there, you're just not aware of it. You're shutting down the synapse to your brain. Right. It doesn't stop the pain from existing. Oh, uh, you're in your philosophical mood. Uh. Honey? You okay? Ugh, mornings are tough right now. Are you... pregnant? No. Oh, honey, is that why you came home? No, not at all. Sweetie, you can tell me I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> and desperate, despite nature's intentions, God came through and blessed us with you. You were a miracle baby. <laughs> That's me. A miracle. After all the miscarriage we carriages, we'd given up hope. And there and there you were. And here I am now. So if you're pregnant, I'm not pregnant. I was not in a situation where pregnancy happens. Okay, okay. I just want you to know that you can always come to us with this. Okay, noted. Can we talk about <laughs> anything else? <laughs> Sure. You know, if you did have a baby... <laughs> okay, I'm out. <laughs> okay, sweetie. I'm sorry. I get excited about grandbabies. It's fine. I'll be back later. Love you. Love you too. If it was a boy, you could name him Calvin. Oh god, mom. If it was a girl, you could name her... Trash baby. Cordelia! Why don't I just have the baby and hand it to you? Ooh! Okay, bye. I'm leaving. <laughs> Mom's got baby rabies. She does. She's a fucking shit. I'm so glad my mom doesn't have that problem. God, yeah. I don't talk to my mom ever to know if she has that problem. She's not getting them. Oh yeah, I forgot that path was open. I actually forget where it leads. Uh, to the woods. Oh uh, yeah. It's been a few weeks since we were able to record. We've been very busy. Yes. Especially you. They stepped up your hours of work and we've had to uh, deal with preparation for the thing we went to last weekend. You love just sitting there yes. absorbing that. Oh thing. god, there's some rise and fall. Ocean sickness. Bridge freezes before road. You can't go past there? Nope. I wonder if that's the way the bus stop. Okay, go faster, May. <laughs> Trekking through the woods. When I play this on my own, I'm tempted to not jump and run around as much as you just to see if that line changes. Well, that was a weird sound effect. Everything must have been in game. So do you have any plans today? Or... Uh, we're gonna check in on Lori. We're gonna do the rounds. Feed my babies. Feed the babies. Talk to Selmers about her badass poem. Hey, May. You alright? Yeah, I guess. Why? You look like... You went through the dryer on the wrong setting. <laughs> yeah. Long week is all. You want to hear a poem? Cheer you up? Hell yes. Fuck yeah. Life goes on. It feels so long. But I report. Life is too short. <laughs> Here's another happy one. Life is great. But life is hard. Let's grill hot dogs in the backyard. Thank you, Selmers. They cheer you up? They did. 
Yay! Somers is awesome and needs to start a tumbler. Jazikov's up there again. You ever, like, drop that telescope? Oh no, he'd cry his eyes out. He loves that thing more than his kid. He has a kid? Yeah, name's Colin. Visits, visits every once in a while. He is hot as hell. You talk to him? Nah, he works at some university research place. He's not interested in this. Selmers? Eh. They do karaoke at Miller's, but only like twice a week. Should be every night. Oh, Selmers is a singer too. I like Selmers. I do too. I don't think I'd want to hang out with her very long, but she'd be fun to party with. Bad weather coming soon. Feel it in my bones. Got arthritis, sir? Good talk. Good talk, sir. Well, at least now we know something else we're going to be doing for today. Okay. Assuming you can remember how to get up there. Oh, uh, yeah, up on the roof. Yep. Hurt, hurt, hop, shoosh! <laughs> Sneezed. Yoink, 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 yoink. Hup, hup. I didn't make it, frick. Oh, remember you have to get up on the blue rope. There you go. Not enough gift. Nope. Hup, there we go. There we go. There we go. May has caused a surprisingly little amount of property damage with all of this running and jumping you're doing. 67 cents. It's gonna say, overall, she's caused a lot of property damage. May! Mr. Chazikov! You look a bit worse for wear today, May. Oh, I'm fine. I made it up here, didn't I? Watch yourself lest you fall. Will do. Here to see some stars? You know it. Come have a look. Burning eyes. Oh, May. You never learn. Wait. Did she learn this time? Oh, we don't even get to see details. All right. Dusk stars. Dusk, Dusk stars. stars. Looking for the wibble wibble. Looking for the wibble wibble. Wibble wibble. Wibble wibble. If I were star there wibble, we I'd be right there. Yeah. I think I got one. I think A got one. Let's see. Hoist that flag! Ferdinand the Mountaineer. Ferdinand. It's a fun name. It is. So what's up with this guy? Ferdinand was from a flatland. This Midwest. Whatever the Midwest of wherever he was from was. Every place has a Midwest. This is true. He dreamed of mountains devoted his life to climbing them. Because his hometown was flat? Isn't this a common instinct? To seek that which is unlike where one grows up? Yeah, I mean, people go to the city a lot. Like, they move there because it's got stuff. And there's more people like them, maybe. Sucks, though. Not everyone can just up and leave. When I left my country, I felt the same thing. But I have not regretted it. Ah, uh, now I retroactively want to give him a Russian accent, but I'm not good at it. You like Possum Springs? It's beautiful in ways perhaps invisible to those who have seen it every to, to those who have seen it every day of their lives. So it happened to Ferdinand. He returned home, he complained that the sky felt heavy. He had been up into the clouds, and now they rested hard upon them. It's a really specific complaint. When one leaves a place. One brings something back when one returns. One. One. We'll have to look for the second dust star in tomorrow's episode. Dusk. I swear I said dusk, but my lazy tongue probably made it sound like dust. Anyway, dust we will star. look for the other star in the next episode. Oh. Um, but just as a reminder... Got the wibble! Wait, da, da, da. Just as a reminder, we do have a Patreon account now. Please consider donating to our Patreon account. You can find a link in the video description. Every dollar you are donating to us is going to food. Last month, we did pretty well. We had more than a few patrons, and for them, I cannot thank you enough. And starting with this episode, you get to see their names up in lights at the end of the video. Because that is oh, yeah, yeah. how I thank you. So thank you all very much for 
for watching, and we will see you tomorrow for another episode and find out what is making that wiggle woggle. Bye! Wibble wibble, wibble wibble. I hope I didn't accidentally just say some sort of slur. Wibbly wibbly, wibbly wibbly. Oh god, this thing's shaking hard. <laughs> <laughs>